In the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. In our gospel reading today, we meet for the second week in a row, Simon Bar-Jonah, who, when he confessed to Jesus, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, Jesus responds by giving Simon a new name, which Jesus uses as a pun. You are Peter, Jesus says. The Greek is Petros, or in Jesus' original Aramaic, the word is Cephas, literally meaning a rock. And Jesus adds, and on this Petra, meaning bedrock, the bedrock of this revelation that I am the Messiah, the Christ, I will build my church. And he further tells Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. But what kind of Messiah, what kind of deliverer has Peter in mind? For when Jesus then tells his disciples that the consequences of his liberating salvation will involve Jesus' own death, Peter gets very upset. Peter and many others had hoped for a divine deliverer, who would achieve victory and vindication for the conquered people of Israel, bypassing any Roman cross. But Jesus makes it clear that he is not fitting into other people's presuppositions. When Peter and the rest received the revelation of God's Messiah in Jesus, It was more than their frail hands and limited imaginations could apprehend. Such a revelation was like saying, God is on the other side of the door, and Jesus is the keyhole. Here, Peter, you take the keys of that kingdom, but before you can unlock the door, you will be blinded by the light coming through the keyhole. Or maybe you'll forget which is the right key. Or maybe you'll just forget where you put your keys, like so many of the rest of us. Let's look at Peter, the rock, the fumbler of keys, this stumbling, impetuous, very earnest, intense and, at times, fear-driven disciple of Jesus. Recall it was Peter who, in a showboat kind of way, attempted to walk on the sea and began to sink. Recall it was Peter who, in the presence of Moses, Elijah, and Jesus at the Transfiguration, thinking the last days had arrived and that they'd be staying up there, impulsively suggests building three booths or shelters on the mountaintop. Again, it was Peter who, just before the crucifixion, denied knowing Jesus three times. In today's story in Matthew, it doesn't take long for Peter to change from the rock to a stumbling block. And it's interesting to note that the Greek New Testament word for stumbling block is scandalon, from which we get the word scandal or scandalize. To be fair, it was also Peter who, a little later, assumed the leadership of the fledgling church and who, after Pentecost, risked his life on a number of occasions, speaking publicly and boldly of his belief in Jesus. It was also Peter, the rock, whose strength and courage helped the young church direct its mission in and beyond the Jewish community. Opposed at first to the baptism of Gentiles, Peter had the humility 
to admit a change of heart, even though he continued to struggle with his own Jewish conservatism. Peter eventually found his way to Rome, where in later writings he was spoken of as having become the first bishop of Rome, the Pope. He was executed during the reign of Nero. As we observe Peter struggle with himself, his life reminds us that Jesus did not come to save the godly and pure and strong, but to save humankind, all of us, in all our failing and falling and dying. So Simon Peter was neither just the bumbling, scandalized disciple, nor the first pope of Rome. Rather, through the grace and mercy of God, he became himself a leader among others in the church. And in the 30 or so years after his sojourn with Jesus, Peter's leadership was marked by a humility that let other leaders, such as James in Jerusalem and Paul with the Gentiles, come to the fore. Peter's leadership became most real when, as Jesus predicted, Peter, the leader, would eventually be led where he did not wish to go, taking up a cross he would have rather avoided. What is the cross which Jesus speaks of in our gospel? The cross is what we may encounter when we give ourselves fully enough to others that we may have an experience that feels like a crucifixion. The cross is something we may encounter when we leave the comfort zones of our predictable self-images and privileged self-absorptions as we join with Christ to create a changed situation in people's lives and in the world. The cross is the place of truth for Jesus and for those who join his mission of repairing this world and restoring humanity in right relationships. The cross is the ultimate test of being a disciple of the unexpected Jesus, who is often hidden under the features of the suffering servant, and in our day is found in the distressing disguise of our neighbor in pain, the homeless, the unemployed, the victims of blatant or more subtle forms of hunger, fear, injustice, or oppression, those without decent daycare or education, without adequate or affordable health care or housing, those besieged by police brutality, and all other forms of institutional and systemic racism. The cross in our day is the place of truth, of awakening, as we join Christ alongside our black and brown brothers and sisters in the ongoing struggle for racial justice and cultural reckoning. In today's gospel, Peter was given his first reality basing in a direct altercation with Jesus, who reminded him that the life you save is the life you lose. As Frederick Buechner put it, the life you clutch, hoard, guard, and play safe with is in the end a life worth little to anybody, including yourself and is a life that we often cannot give to others without strings attached. And only a life given away for love's sake is a life most worth living. As he learned from his experiences, Peter was eventually able to express his love for God and others in a way that his ambitions, his fears, his pride and his prejudice, his status and his comfort were no longer at the center. Instead, 
His Lord became his true center. By, he ended up forgetting or letting go of some parts of himself and giving of his true self in such a way that there should have been less of him than there was to start with. Yet, paradoxically, there ended up being more because now it was real and authentic, his true nature, his Christ nature. The experience of following the Lord, even unto his own martyrdom, enabled Peter at last to really be himself. As he took up the very cross, he had earlier denied Jesus would encounter. The converse to the life you save is the life you lose, is those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Like Peter, we are on a path of seeking both a purposeful life, which we can willingly lose, and finding a sense of our authentic self, which we can freely give to God and others. So, like Peter, let's get real, knowing that the one who calls us to take up our cross is the one who goes with us to the cross and beyond. So the key, as it were, to all this is to go out, often stumbling like Peter, yet with God's help, pushing yourself to do what God would have you do, giving yourself freely and fully for love's sake and for the common good. That is the life worth living. Amen.